The new version of the foreign policy doctrine signed by Putin on March 31st focuses on several points. First, Russia is a civilization separate from Western, Chinese, Muslim and India. Second, the Federation is the center of the Russian world. Russia undertakes to defend and develop its traditions and ideals. And third, China and India are named as Russia's main allies. I actually have a question about partnership, because not a single external international document, bilateral document says that Russia and China are full-fledged partners. I do not think that China is now delighted that it is being drawn to this story of the terrorist state, Putin's aggressor state. The second aspect, India, which is recalled in this doctrine, but the idea also did not proclaim any partnership with the Russian Federation. The fact that they want to get cheap oil and gas at super discounts, the fact that they want to boost their economy through this, does not mean that they want to enter into close political relations with Putin's terrorist regime. The doctrine refers to the fact that Russia is faced with existential threats from the so-called unfriendly states, and the largest of them is directly named the United States. At the same time, the document notes that Moscow seeks peaceful coexistence and a balance of interests with Washington. Therefore, Russia seeks to maintain strategic stability with the United States, referring to the nuclear potential of the two countries, from a publication of Reuters. The document also notes that Russia is ready and will repel possible attacks not only on the Federation but also on the Allies. It is difficult to understand what this means, but apparently it will be possible to invent hypothetical problems in conditional Belarus or Kazakhstan in order to enter foreign territory with a military contingent under the guise of protection. It sounds loud, but it actually looks unrealistic, especially considering the realities of the war in Ukraine. Vadim Denisenko, executive director of the Ukrainian Institute for the Future, on Facebook. The updated doctrine also mentions that international law is no longer a system of rules but the role of international organizations, such as the UN, the OSCE, the Council of Europe, is completely reduced. So, first of all, Putin's Russia, Putin's Moscovia itself, as Podolak said, raped international law and the UN statute. It should not be there at all in this Security Council. The fact that they attacked a non-nuclear state so that they distribute nuclear weapons to third countries. Well, the icing of the cake is that Putin is on the international wanted list as a criminal for stealing children. The new concept formalizes the methods of Russian policies that were used to attack Ukraine and occupy its territories. It contains the thesis that Russia protects and ensures the rights of its citizens living outside the country. Thus, Russia continues to view the territories of the former Soviet Union as its sphere of influence. Analysts note that the document is designed mainly for Russians. In fact, this is a manual for Russian propagandists. All the feathers there are absolutely unrealistic, and more than that, they are absurd in many ways. Then we ask ourselves a logical question, who is this document for? And the answer is obvious, for domestic consumption. So that an ordinary Russian understands that the concept is changing, Russia is becoming a vassal, and now she will decide the fate of Russia. They will live in a kind of a Russian world. The new geopolitical doctrine was signed just before the start of Russia's presidency in the United Nations, and it is aimed, among other things, at creating an anti-Western coalition in the UN Security Council. But according to analysts at the Institute for the Study of War, China did not take this idea positively and abandoned a direct conflict with the West. Reported by Serhii Kulas, Yulia Hranovska, UATV News.